Hey friends, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. We have a collaboration playlist for you guys hosted by Suzanne over at Whimsical Family Life. And we are sharing about homeschool books and resources that have really impacted us as homeschool parents and that we wish we had known about sooner. This is a perfect video for this time of year. I know we have a lot of new homeschoolers, people who are thinking about starting up next year. This is also the time of year where a lot of homeschool families are wrapping up their school lessons and starting to consider what they wanna change for next year. Spring and summer is also my favorite time of year to reread some of these favorites. Uh, I guess you could call it like professional development. Before we go any further, please be sure to go down and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. So what I have done is I have scoured my bookshelves and thought back to books that have really impacted me. These are in no particular order. These are just my absolute favorites. I think every homeschooler should at least read once, if not add to their bookshelves. Books are my preferred style of learning, so that's what I'm going to focus on mostly. But stick around till the end of my video where I share a couple of podcasts that I really enjoy when I'm busy, my hands are busy, and I just need like a little pep talk. All right, let's get right into it. My first book on my list is Home Learning Year by Year by Rebecca Rupp. And this is not the most exciting or glamorous book on my list, but it is a very practically useful book. This one will be very helpful for both new homeschoolers as well as seasoned veterans who just need a little refresher or maybe a reminder for things that they may have let fall through the cracks or if they're not sure if they're missing something from their homeschool, this is a great way to like check in on yourself. This book offers an extremely detailed list of schools, um, schools. <laughs> this book offers an extremely detailed list of skills and objectives based on grade level. And it goes from pre-K all the way through to grade 12. Now, obviously these skills are going to vary depending on your homeschooling approach, your philosophy, and where you're at in things like history or science, but it's still a great place to look just to see like if you may be missing something that typically is taught around third or fourth grade or, you know, things like that. This book also includes a lot of curriculum recommendations, a website and book recommendations based on those skills that typically are taught in that grade level. Now, it's not a strictly secular book. There are, you know, little bits and pieces here and there. There are lots of curriculum in here that are not secular curriculum and they're not specified which curricula that are recommended are religious or secular or where they fall on that spectrum. So you'll have to do a little bit of research yourself when looking at things that are recommended in this book, but either way, it's still a great starting point. It's still a nice reminder, and I definitely still refer back to it, you know, year after year. So a good one to have on your shelf. This next book I actually just discovered about a year ago, maybe nine months ago, and it's called The Gift of Failure by Jessica LaHaye. This one is not exactly a homeschooling book per se. It doesn't uh, really talk about homeschooling that much. It comes from the perspective of a parent who has a child in the public school setting. Still, I think all the advice and information and support in here is applicable in homeschooling and for any parent. The focus of this book is all about making room for and even creating opportunities for children to fail. So a lot of uh, learning is going to be tied to failure. I'm sure as a homeschooler, you know this is not, this is not new information for you, but even knowing that it's still a good reminder and it still has a lot of concrete tips in here and like ways to put this thinking into practice in your home that maybe you had forgotten about or hadn't considered. I hope I'm making sense. I do have one excerpt in here tagged that I think I'm going to go ahead and read to you if it's not too long because I think it sums up kind of the philosophy of this book really well. The key to learning how to organize one's life is to try one strategy and see if it works. If it does, great stick with what works. But if it fails, if papers are lost, deadlines are missed, and opportunities are lost as a result of flawed strategies, 
it is vital that the pain of that failure is felt. That pain, whether it's experienced as frustration, disappointment, sadness, or anger, is what prompts change and growth. It's what prompts the formation of a new strategy, and it's what prompts learning. I hate seeing my students or my children upset, but on the other side of that upset is the promise of improvement. One more step toward the day they will be able to successfully manage their lives. Viewed in that light, failure is progress. So I can't really sum this book up any better than that. That pretty much is the message of the whole entire book. And I know this is gonna be one I reread probably every year or two, <laughs> cause I just need that reminder, you know, constantly to let it be okay. And just let that room for failure and growth be there. If you are already a secular homeschooler, this next author may look familiar to you. This book is A Literary Education by Emily Cook. She is also the author of all of the levels of Build Your Library curriculum. The premise of this book is just what the subtitle says. It is taking Charlotte Mason uh, principles and strategies and applying them to a secular homeschool environment. This goes into living books, dictation, narration, um, socialization. <laughs> getting outside, using nature. She talks about all of it in a really accessible and concise way. This is not, you know, a thick tome. This is very easy to digest, especially if you are interested in using the Build Your Library curriculum. This is one I highly recommend getting and reading because it does a phenomenal job explaining the thought process behind the um, things used in Build Your Library. It really makes the curriculum make a whole lot more sense. Kind of along those same lines, this next book is the absolute best book that you're gonna find uh, that talks about the process of narration. And that is Know and Tell by Karen Glass. Now I picked this book up just for a little bit of light reading. I went into this already knowing what narration was, what it was about and why we do it. However, this shed a whole lot of new light. It gave me a huge boost of confidence in the process of narration and how that facilitates learning, especially learning composition and writing skills. I went through a period of time not too long ago where I started to doubt the process of Charlotte Mason uh, strategies. I started to doubt how well narration was working and how well it was going to serve my kids. Uh, in writing, but it really helped uh, give me that boost of confidence and help me to trust the process a little bit better. This breaks narration down into actionable steps and tips for actually putting this into practice. It's not just fluff. There are lists in here of, you know, specific skills you're looking for at each stage of, um, of their narration journey. So I highly, highly recommend picking up this book if you are at all interested in using narration as a tool for learning writing. I, uh, I think we have a, a trend going on here. <laughs> This next book is Writing with Ease by Susan Wise Bauer. You may be familiar with the Writing with Ease curriculum, and that's basically what this book is. It's like the teacher's implementation guide, but in a very broad sense. So there are the, the workbooks that go along with this that have the actual copy work um, and narration passages in it. However, this book is something that you could use as a resource to teach writing to your kids for years. You could cover years of writing curriculum by using this to inform the um, copywork passages you choose and the skills that you're targeting when you're doing copywork or narration. This is actually what we used to teach writing to my son when he was about six or maybe seven years old. It does a really nice job of breaking down each year into the skills that you're targeting. So for example, Here's one of those for year one. It does a nice job breaking down. So at first you're going to be looking at these skills. Then once those are mastered, you're gonna move on to these skills and it just progresses throughout the year. Now it doesn't give you actual passages to use. You still have to pull those from the books and resources you use maybe in your content areas or the literature that you're reading together. But it, it breaks down kind of like what you're looking for when you choose those passages. I almost didn't choose this one because it's 
it's more like a curriculum than anything else but I still find myself taking a glance in here when I'm not sure like if we've really mastered something and maybe I want just a reminder of what I'm looking for in um, in our writing skills. So this is still one I look at once in a while and I'm glad I have it on my shelf. That wraps up my five top favorite books. However, I just couldn't bring myself to leave out a, uh, a favorite writer of mine and that is Julie Bogart. So I have an honorable mention for you, a bonus, and that is The Brave Learner by Julie Bogart. If you are a homeschooler, if you're looking at homeschooling, I am sure that you have heard of Julie Bogart or the Brave Writer program. Now the Brave Writer curriculum is not a very good fit for my teaching style, but that's another video. I do love the Brave Learner. It's not as um, practical or workable advice as some of the other books that I mentioned, but it is perfect for motivation, uh, for a deep sigh of relief, for a pick-me-up uh, when your homeschool life starts to feel monotonous or there's a sense of drudgery. This helps to keep that spark of curiosity and magic uh, alive in your homeschool. So I definitely recommend at least reading this once, but I, I do reread it probably once a year. So I told you that I would share some of my favorite podcasts with you guys. I don't always listen to podcasts. They're not really my go-to form of self-learning, but they do come in handy when I don't have an audiobook that I'm listening to right now and I want to listen to something while my hands are busy, you know, folding laundry or doing some chores or cooking dinner or something like that. These podcasts have really helped to keep me motivated and remind me I'm not alone. The first one that I want to mention is the Read Aloud Revival podcast. I am completely drawing a blank on the woman's name. Oh, Sarah McKenzie. That's what it is. Her podcast has been a really great motivator, especially when we were kind of starting our homeschool journey or after the first year or two, I was really starting to feel like a sense of drudgery. And I started listening to her podcast and it really helped spark that desire to make reading a top priority in our homeschool. I mean, I have always loved to read, but I never made it, I never made time for it like I do now. It wasn't a huge priority to me. And I could kind of see that reflected in my kids. Listening to her podcast kind of helped to reignite that desire to make that a priority in our homeschool and in our life. Now, she is not secular. The podcast is not secular at all. There is plenty of mention of religion, but it's not distracting. I never felt like it was um, an overly forced message, you know, underlying everything else. I still took a lot away from it and it still, you know, helped me a lot during a certain period of my homeschool journey. There are two other podcasts that I like to turn to when I just want like a voice in my ear that sounds almost like I'm chatting with a friend about homeschooling or just mom life in general. And that is Homeschool Unrefined and the Homeschool Sisters podcast. These two are ones that I really enjoy listening to. They feel like I just have a sister in my ear that I'm sitting down having coffee with and chatting about school and life. Of course, I will link to these podcasts down below in the description. I will also link to all the books that I mentioned in this video. I also encourage you to go to this collaboration playlist right here where you can find more videos talking about books and resources that have been helpful in their homeschools. I almost forgot to mention, did you see my new bookshelf? Here. Ta -ta. Look at that. This was bought kind of on a whim, but I'm so glad I did. It was the best purchase that we've made in a very long time. And um, now I have room for even more books.